Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope that you'll stick around to find out what this month's theme is and see the projects that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, it is time for another Four on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. If you're new to my channel, each month my friend Danny and I get together and pick one technique, tool, or product and create four projects using it, just to show you how you can stretch your supplies. I participate with a video here on my YouTube channel and Danny participates with a blog post. I do have her blog post for today linked below, so make sure when you're done here you go check it out and leave her some love. In past months, we have used the wreath builder and buttons and brads and a single stamp set, stuff like that to create four projects. If you're interested in seeing any of those past videos, make sure to check my link in the description box below. For June, we decided that we would use one sketch and create four projects using it as inspiration. For our sketch this month, we will be using the October 2019 sheet load of cards sketch. This was originally a Z fold, but I'm sure that we'll both be using it in different ways than that. If you want to download this file, I will link the original video in the description box below. As always, it's free to subscribers. This is going to be one of those times where the single card dimensions might come in handy. Once I start the process portion of today's video, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments section below. Let's get crafty! For my first project, I got out some Gina K Designs ink spots, her new wreath builder, and one of her wreath builder stamp sets. I also got out my Versamark ink, my Detail Gold Embossing Powder, a Paper Tray ink stamp set, one of my top fold card bases, and a couple pieces of colored cardstock. For project number one, I am going to be creating a card with a wreath as the focal point. I got out my new Gina K Designs Wreath Builder template, and she has redesigned these so they come with this template or this piece for the center, and there are circles etched in there so you can see exactly where around the circle or around the wreath your stamp will go depending on where you place it. I want this butterfly stamp to eventually go into the wreath in the center so I place that where I thought I might like it and it was centered on about the fifth ring in so that is when I placed all of my wreath elements what I focused on going around or where to place them. I won't bore you with too many of the wreath building details. There are lots of other videos out there that focus on that, but I will let you kind of watch me just a little bit as I build the wreath. Once I had all of the colorful elements stamped, I got out my heat gun and dried that ink a little bit. And the reason for that is I want to heat emboss now the butterfly and some little ink splatters. And you can ask me how I know this, but if you don't make sure that the ink is dry, the powder sticks to lots of different elements on the wreath. So if you want to try this, just make sure you let that ink dry completely. You'll see there that I did stamp and gold emboss that butterfly. Now to finish this off and to bring in some more of the gold, I got out a little splatter stamp from that paper tray ink set and I went around the outside with that. Now you'll see that I'm going to do it in parts. I use my embossing buddy on a little bit of the wreath, stamp three of the splats, add the powder. And then at the very end, I got out my heat gun and melted that powder around the wreath. Thank you. 
for my sentiment, I got out this Momenta stamp set and I will be stamping Hello. I'm going to do the same thing, stamp it in Versamark and heat emboss with the gold detail embossing powder. I thought that the flourishes or the ends on my Hello kind of reminded me of a butterfly's path. To tie in with the gold on the focal point, I decided to mat this piece on a scrap of gold cardstock I had. I just adhered it down and then trimmed so there were even borders all the way around. And now it's time to start assembling this card. Because it is a Z fold, I'm going to fold back the front cover on my card base. And you might notice now that versus the sketch on the October 2019, this is going to be a landscape instead of a portrait card. So it is a little bit different of a layout. Once I had that folded, I then cut down my cardstock to go on the card. I cut a piece of blue that was two and a half inches wide by four inches tall, and then my pink got cut to five and a quarter inches wide by four inches tall. To add a little bit of interest or texture to the plain colored cardstock, I ran each of those pieces through my cuddle bug with the dots embossing folder. Once that was done, I adhered my blue cardstock to the front panel of the card and I adhered the pink cardstock to the inside. Next, I put adhesive on the back of a three and three quarter inch square piece of cardstock and adhered that to the center of the inside of the card. This is where I can write my personal message. The final step was to get the focal point adhered on the front. Now because this opens and you don't want to stick your focal point to the inside of the card, I did kind of mark where the adhesive would need to stop and it's about halfway in there and then I got that placed down. And here's a look at the final card. For my second project, I got out this pretty pink posh Happy Mail stamp set. I will be stamping with Versamark and embossing with silver detail embossing powder. I also got out an oval spellbinders die for my focal point. Off camera, I pre-cut and folded all of the pattern papers and cardstock that I would need for this card. For the focal point on this card, I'm going to be using two different stamps from the set, the Cute Little Birdie and the You've Got Mail Sentiment. I want to make sure that they're going to fit within that oval die cut, so when I arrange them on my Misty, I place the die cut in there and just make sure that everything will be nice and centered. Before I stamp, I rub my embossing buddy on there, and then I'm just going to stamp, pour the powder on there, and heat set it with my heat gun. Once that was all set, I got out a piece of scotch blue removable tape that I've been using for the past couple weeks, placed my die where it needed to go, and then ran that through my cuddle bug. I got out my art glitter glue, and I wanted to try to hide the adhesive as best as possible. Now knowing this is vellum, it's probably not going to be perfect, but I went around behind the stamped image with my glue bottle, and then I set that aside so it could dry. While that was drying, I went ahead and put the rest of my card together. And again, these dimensions and each of the pattern paper pieces just follow the instructions in that October 2019 sheet load of cards. Don't forget it is linked in the description box below if you want to check it out. By the time I had the pattern paper pieces on the card, my focal point was dry. I got out a piece of vellum and matted my focal point with that, and then again I added adhesive just to the back left side of this and placed it on the front of the card. This is just another little scrap of white cardstock that will get hidden behind the focal point for that personal message inside. Before this card is finished, I did get out some of my silver glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Originally, I placed five in kind of a wonky pattern, but then I decided I didn't like that, so I just placed them around the edge of that vellum oval. And here is a close-up look at the card. Yeah. 
for my third project, I wanted to see how this sketch or layout would look on a tag. I got out a couple scraps of pattern paper I had in my stash, two nesting tag dies, a little to or from tag that's actually left over from a paper pumpkin kit, and this cute Fisker's bow punch. The first step for this project was to do the die cutting. I cut out both of the tags from the floral paper, and then from the gold foil paper, I just cut out the smaller tag. Next, I sliced each of the smaller die cuts in half, and because the plastic bar to hold down the pattern papers would have interfered with my fingers, I used that scrap of scotch blue removable tape to hold that pattern paper in place while I cut it. For the last element on this tag, I punched and made one of the bows out of the pink pattern paper. Isn't it so cute? Now that all of the pieces were ready, it was time to start assembly. I added adhesive to each of the small half tags and placed those so there was an even border around the outside edges and the middle. Once that was placed down, I added the to and from tag and then with some more little glue dots, I added my bow to the top to cover the hole that was already punched in that little tag. Once that was done, I brought in my crocodile and added a hole in the tag. Now, I didn't want that extra pink to be at the bottom, so I just trimmed that off and here is a look at the final piece. For the final project today, I'm going to create a slimline card with the sketch. I got out some fishtail banner dies from My Favorite Things, the Hero Arts Hello Stamp and Cut set. I will be doing a little bit of blending to make my own color die cut, so I got out Gina K Designs Passionate Pink and one of my blender brushes. And off camera, I had already cut all of my pattern paper pieces and I got out a piece of white cardstock for my card base. To create my slimline card, I'm going to cut the piece of cardstock so it's 7 by 8 and a half, and then I fold it in half for a finished size of 3 and a half inches wide by 8 and a half inches tall. Now, this does fit in a regular number 10 or a business size envelope. To fit the sketch or the layout, my green pattern paper is three and a quarter inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall, and both of my pattern pieces are one and seven sixteenths inches wide by eight inches tall. Since those were all ready, I started to put my card front together. The green pattern paper piece just got laid down right on the front, and then I placed each of those pattern paper strips so again there was an even border on the outsides and between the two pattern papers. Because I wanted my die cut hello to match the ink from my stamp sentiment and I didn't have any cardstock in that color, I made my own. I got out my blender brush and that Gina K Designs ink spot and I just colored the bottom portion of the cardstock just so it would fit around the hello die cut. Once that was done, I then cut that out and you'll see here I have a custom color die cut. Next, I chose two sizes of those fishtail banner dies. I cut the larger one from the green pattern paper and the smaller one from the white cardstock. Next, it was time to stamp my sentiment. The Hello die cut I paired with the You Brighten My Day stamp from the Stamp and Cut set. The great thing about the Misty is you can kind of play around with the orientation, and then because you pick it up with that door, that stamp is going to stamp exactly where you want it to. Once again, I got out my art glitter glue and the fine tip on this bottle makes it perfect to adhere these delicate die cuts. Once I had adhesive on the back of that, I placed it onto my die cut fishtail and set that aside to dry. To add some dimension to the card, I got out my big blue roll of foam tape and I added three strips of foam tape to the back of the larger green die cut. I pulled that release paper and then centered this piece on the card front. 
By that time, my sentiment strip was dry, so I added adhesive to the back and centered that onto the green die cut. The final step was to add a little bling. I placed three clear gems on the front of the card, and here is a close-up look. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's projects. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Danny's blog post. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.